Good evening, fake fidget cube lovers. Uh, it is the night before the night before Christmas. Um, I'm going to do a bit of a different one tonight. Um, we'll take what I want to do is take a little peek inside um, one of our high quality fake fidgets, um, just to answer a few questions that have been uh, popping up here and there. Um, just, right, just to get us kicked off, um, some people have been asking about magnetics that, you know, um, some concerns about having, um, possible high power magnets, obviously in your pocket or purse or whatever, um, that could damage your credit card, your phone, um, anything with, you know, with, um, uh, integrated circuit or a chip or anything like that, magnetic strip, etc. Um, so let's start off with that. Um, what I've set up, I've got my old phone here, my, uh, good old HTC one. At the moment, it's just flicking around at standard background magnetics um the earth's magnetic field is about 30 i think 32 33 uh micro tells her. um so if you look at why there that's that's what that's reading um the other two are, it's kind of flicking about because I do have some uh, magnets nearby. So we know that the sense on his phone's working okay. So first of all, let's just uh, run the magnetic sensor over the boxes of um, one of our medium quality fidget cubes, uh, which is one on the left, and one of our high quality fidget cubes. Um, which is one of the latest ones, one of the camo cubes. So I'm just going to separate these apart a little bit. I may have to do this a few times tonight and, and put the camera down or, or cut and and come back um, because I've only got one hand um, when I'm using the camera, so it's a bit of a nightmare. So first of all, we'll watch the meter there. And in fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to scroll down um, so we can see the graph. Now, let's quickly run. I know the sensor is round about where it level with the camera on the back of, uh, of the back of the HTC. So, as you can see, I can run run that over the box of um, of the medi medium quality fidget, and apart from a bit of background magnetism there's nothing there at all now if we move over to the high quality fidget the camo fidget um then there you go so i haven't even uh, i'm hovering a good inch or so away from the the box there and you can see that it's going off the chart. Let's just scroll back and see what we're getting. So if I touch the box with it, we're getting yeah, 250 micro telsas, um, around about, it varies, there you go, 300, 315. So we know there's definitely magnets um, inside that box. So. Uh, we know, I mean, we, we've scanned this one now. You've seen this cube a million times. It's, it's one of the medium quality uh, red and blacks that I've got. Um, I'll put that to the side because we know that's fine. There's no magnets in it. Um, in fact, oh, I think we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, right, so the, the camo fidget. You, know, you saw me review these the other day. They are absolutely fantastic. 
Um, I got some great news um, from a supplier um, yesterday about some new colours and some new new bits and pieces that are coming in January. Um, it will be through the same supplier, and for the girlies and the ladies out there um, who like their fidgets but also want a feminine touch, then uh, we may just have something. Uh, just right for you so um yeah why would they put magnets inside a fidget um it's a good question the main reason is the latch on the top switch um it's why we get such a definite click um it's because there's a metal plate either side either end of the rocker switch and there's a there's a high power magnet below where that lands so as it goes down and it gets close to the bottom it actually pulls itself in and clicks against the metal plate you can actually tell that by just sort of i mean you barely have to touch the switch and the magnetic force on these will pull it down um Again, this is an unofficial cube, so I, you know, I'm not saying that that the ANSI cubes are going to have this or not, um, but I'd say it's pretty likely to get that nice, really good tactile feedback. The other place um, where I found the magnet is on the joystick, um, and again, it's to get that nice snappy return to centre um that we get on joystick and again what they've done is is it's the joystick's mounted on kind of a ball and there is a magnet in the center um and so as you move it away it moves pulls away from the magnet but when you let go the magnet's force brings it straight back into into the little um socket where it sits so we know there's we know there's definitely um three magnets um inside there. Let's see what it reads um without a box on it, so you can see it's 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 reading pretty high on that. Um if you move it around, just move to the rocker switch, where's the joystick? Um See there, we're hitting about 300 again, and on the rocker switch, yeah, you can really see it jump up. And if we go back down to the grass, I mean, you can see that's really uh, a bit of a squiggle we got going on there. Um, okay, so that's magnets. We'll come back to magnets in a minute. Um, I'll put that back to one side. For a second the other thing I wanted to just quickly go over tonight is tactile feedback and in particular the tactile feedback on the five face buttons now something that ANSI cubes have released information about yesterday is that what they've done you, you you've got the normal two silent and three clicky um, face buttons there, uh, the five face buttons. Now what ANSI have decided to do is add um, a different tactile strength um, to one of the buttons in the middle. So it will be somewhere between a nice loud pen clicking um, type uh, sort of click that you get and yeah, and the silent one, so something in the middle. Um, I think that's a pretty cool idea. Um, I like it, um, and it, it's nice. It's nice and simple for them to do. Um, it, it doesn't really affect manufacturing costs, which is cool, because we don't want them skimping. Um, you know, having to uh, to pay a ton for one thing. Um, and lose quality from another, so that's, that's positive. Um, so 
very quickly we're going to be looking at the, the tactile um, force buttons and how that plate works. Um, right, first of all, I mean, there's a ton of different tactile buttons and switches um, out there. Uh, this is your basic push and release button there. Um, silent, of course. Um, it's a push to make. Um, and, yeah, it's pretty much you know a standard regular button that everyone everyone's seen um now we get a bit closer to what is behind the the five buttons on the fidget cube here um now these are regular 50 50 size um tactile um buttons um this is a bbc micro bit um, which is a fantastic bit of kit, but um, you can go away and look that up. Um, but great little board. I only got it out because it features a few of these tactile buttons. There's one up on the top there, which is the reset button. And then if you turn it over, um, you've got your A and B buttons there. Now these are okay. They, they got a plastic... Um, Cylinder, same as as the fidget cube. The fidget cubes have got a rubber one, so it's it's essentially the same thing, um, but it's all built into a single unit. And this is this is the single unit that they're built into. It's just a sorry, bit out of focus. It's just a four legged um, push to make tactile button, um, and it's got. A nice bit of feedback as you can hear but the problem with these is obviously the profile of them um, it's it's a 50 by 50 or 50 sorry five millimeters by five millimeters in size um, and then its depth um, the actual casing is, is just under three millimeters um, and then you've got the legs as well, which are about three and a bit millimetres. So obviously that's a lot of space to take up. Now, what we got here is a solution to that. Um, these are what's called tactile domes. Um, these ones are made by Snaptron over in the US. Um, and they basically have the same function as the ones that you see on on general electronics gear um they've got the very good benefit of being very low profile as you can see that sticky out bits the battery on the back i'll show you so but as you can see they're they're so low profile that it it doesn't actually add any profile to um to this board it's just a basic demo board of, of a couple of their um switches that they make um they got a two-part one so you press it down a certain way one light lights up finish it off and the second one lights up um but these two you can hear a bit more tactile that one lights the green up that one likes to red up, and yeah, they're nice and low profile, but they've got a good bit of tactile feedback um, there, which is great. So, let's just move this stuff out of the way a second. Again, I apologize, I really need to invest in a, uh, in a tripod and proper camera. Um, so, now a few of you are going to be a bit, little bit horrified by this, but what we got here is one of the high quality fidget cubes that's been pulled apart. Um, now this one really took a beating because I didn't know how to get it apart and 
oh well it's pretty stupid and missed a, a blatant way to that it should have been done um now in fact the fidget cube is actually only held together by two little screws which are those two there um and to break the fidget cube in half you just pull the dial wheel off with you know something flat um behind the dial wheel you find your two screws going through the screw holes there and they bolt straight into the central in you know the innards of the cube there um whilst we're on the spinner you can see there that as we've mentioned before the spinner is actually mounted on on this cube it's actually mounted on two um sets two bearings there um on another one that I've looked inside it's only mounted on a single bearing um but this one was mounted on two and and you know these high quality fidget cubes the dial really does spin when you give it a bit um so that's that let's just quickly go back to the magnets um before we move on too much uh I'll just grab my steel screwdriver now the magnets as I said um, there's the joystick and if I put that in there as you can see that's the central magnet um, that pulls the joystick back to centre and that's happily lifting this fidget cube weighs about probably 40 or 50 grams that's happily lifting that on my screwdriver and I can shake it about and it, that's not going anywhere so that's that's pretty serious uh, pretty serious magnet you can see we've picked up a uh, the screws as well um, on the rocker switch um, which is what I was going to show you next so we'll move to the rocker switch and pull these screws off hopefully it won't get stuck again um, now, like I said, the rocker switch has got uh, two magnets and two plates. Um, let's switch that the other way. There you go. There's your metal plate at the top, and then below it, you've got your magnet, which is there. And again that is a seriously seriously strong magnet and there's two of those based in the rocker switches so with regard to um keeping these in your purse or your pocket or whatnot um i think it's actually going to be pretty important um whether the official ANSI cubes are going to have magnets in or not because if they do and they're of this strength, then it is going to put um, things like cards and bus passes and anything with a magnetic strip um, at risk of corruption. And, you know, it, it can mess up your credit cards. It can even mess up electronics like your mobile phone or iPad or I, I, whatever. Um, so... I mean, that's actually a really mentally strong magnet. There it goes. Um, as I said, the reason they're on there, um, on the joysticks, so return to centre on the um, on the rocker switch. Picks up that screw again. It's to get a nice clicky noise as the rocker switch slams down onto the magnet with its metal plate from above. Right. That's all for magnets tonight. So we're going to move that out of the way, that out of the way, that out of the way. What we're going to be looking at is the five, um, the five tactile um, buttons there. Now turn that over. What's behind the tactile buttons is a little aluminium plate with four screws that hold it down. Um, I'm going to give this a go and try and get this undone with 
my phone in one hand with the camera. There goes number one. Uh, number two. Number three. And finally, number four. Now you can see this this cube really took a beating as I was trying to get into it. Um, it entirely on me. I was stupid not to pull um, pull the dial and check behind it for screws. Um, so it was late at night and and it was a stupid move and it's destroyed this cube and. All it's really good for now is just demoing what's inside. So that's our our aluminium plate released. Um, the four screws removed. Now, if we turn it over, what we got here? Oh, let's have a look at, at the back of the uh, back of the switch. What we got here is like a membrane, a rubber membrane, which makes up the four or five sorry buttons that go through there um, and it is literally just a single piece of rubber with five cylinders on it and that's all it is as you as you push down the rubber bends and the harder part the hard flat part of the rubber on the back of it pushes down what it pushes down onto is the aluminium plate. Now, as we know, only three of the tactile domes on, or three of the tactile switches on the fidget um, make noise. The other two are silent. What they've actually done is used the tactile domes, like I showed you, um, from the little Snaptron demo board it is identical the slightly bigger these ones but they're the same it's the same tactile domes um, and they've basically got a sticky surface over the top of them um, and then they sit onto the uh, aluminium plate and that's where we get attacked on noise from now this is what I'm going to do and I will do this in a bit I might try and get some pictures and a quick video up later but my intention Ansi have announced they're going to release a new cube with um, with a different strength tactile dome in the center so you've got a halfway quiet one in the middle what i propose to do is put five different tactile domes behind mine i'll fill two empty sections there and there and um we'll put a new bit of uh sticky plastic membrane over that that just peels away fairly easily and um yeah, when we've got a new dome on there, um, we'll just run a new bit of, of plastic over the top of it and stick it down. Now, if I open my development case, you can see I've got all the gear here. I've got so many domes, it's, it's unreal. Different forces, different sizes, different models. Um, there's a comparison chart on the box. What I've also got is a list of the smaller ones, which we're going to be looking at this size about here. As you can see, just on the paper, you can see they're stuck down with the plastic. Um, same as on the fidget cubes, aluminium backing. Um, and finally... The other thing we have are 
a ton more domes that are ready to stick down um, and again uh, it's a nice thick um, set I've got about I think there's about 15 pages of domes of all different strengths all different forces and all different sizes and again that's the size we're going to be using so what I'm going to be doing tonight is I may do it with um, with my broken cube here, I may actually strip another cube down properly by removing the screws rather than forcing it apart. And I'm going to prove that we can have five different sounds and forces on our tactile dome switch. Um, so we'll get rid of the silent ones, or may maybe leave one silent one, I'm not sure yet. I'll see how we go we will and what i'll do is i'll pull the the three that are already on there i'll replace what probably the one in the middle with the one that's already on there and then the other three maybe four i will put different strengths running from you know some fairly soft easy to click ones to some real monsters that really make a nice nice hard uh, now click so it's all pretty simple um, as, as I said um, it's a nice little hack nice little mod um, for fake fidgets at least obviously none of us have seen um, the real fidget cubes yet so we don't know what features they're going to have but we have been told now that you're going to have the two silent buttons and then you're going to have your two regular buttons that make a nice click and then the one in the middle on the official cube is going to be somewhere in between um, silent and clicky um that's what we've been told by ANSI. Um all we got access to at the moment is fake fidgets. Um we are certainly not short on fake fidgets. Um so what I'll probably do is is um hack into uh into a different one. This one's a bit too beaten up to put back together now. If I want to do a nice mod I want to do it um, so I can put it back together and, and it all looks nice and it's got a few extra features, um, some different uh, levels of, of feedback. So that's just a brief look at a couple of things tonight that people have asked about. Most important thing I think is about the magnets. Um, now this internal mechanism, the whole centre of the fake fidget cube is actually a pretty cl complex piece of kit when you start looking at it. Um, you can start going in close. It's had a lot of thought put into it. Um, actually, quickly, whilst I'm on the subject, the ball bearing there, you can see it clicks down. That's also just clicking down onto a face, um, just a single dome, same as those. Um, so it might be interesting to see if I can uh I can undo those two screws there and get access to the plate behind the ball bearing and see if I can put a nice really loud clicky one behind the ball bearing um that hasn't got too much force pushing it forward and holding the ball bearing in tight. So we need to find a nice happy medium there, but I think it'd be nice if the ball bearing was a little louder. Um, so yeah, it's a complex little mechanism. And to be honest, I, I'm i not entirely convinced that a Chinese factory invented this in a very short time span that they, they made, invented started production and shipped all these fake fidgets out and remember 
these were arriving in the UK six weeks after the Kickstarter campaign ended. So my I, I really do think that they somehow got hold of um of a spec sheet for the official cubes and copied as best as they could because this whole mechanism is is just too well designed to have been knocked together overnight um and to make you know to make the fidget cube at this high quality that these ones are this is one of the, the nice matte vinyl ones so that's that's interesting and, and if that's the case um that is definitely going to mean that we're going to have these these mentally strong likely rare earth magnets i'm guessing they've, they've got a hell of a real hell of a pull on them um and you know i i, I really don't like the idea that they've done that um on a on something that's going to be in people's pockets next to their wallets in uh you know women's handbags um and purses and and what not um where you might store um anything with a magnetic strip from your bank card to your car parking swipe card or what not so um it's something that ANSI need to let us know about um and let us know the strengths of um these ones are running when I measured them earlier, about um, 300, 350 uh, microtelsas. Um, so not not massively strong, but that is a significant um, significant strength. And there's three of those magnets, remember, in here. So that's it for now. I'm gonna. Have something to eat, watch a bit of Teddy, and then I'm going to have a look into um, opening up another one of these these high quality cubes, this time without um, beating it to pieces, and carefully mob this, this back plate um, so it has five different, five different um, strengths of tactile dome. And so when it goes back together, each each of the five buttons um, will sound different and feel different, which I think will be pretty cool. Um, and take it a step further from from Ansi's design with the halfway silent button in the middle. Anyway, I, I know I've waffled on a little bit tonight, guys. Um, 